Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Today we have two video cards at two very different price points. The $600 RTX 4070 featuring 12 gigabytes of VRAM and the $1600, ouch, RTX 4090 featuring twice as much VRAM, 24 gigabytes. There is a 4080 and a 4070 Ti in the middle, but we're not gonna be looking at those today. Instead, the question is, what are the differences in the size and the features on the cards between a $600 and $1,600 card? Which should you buy and who are these right for? Buy Windows 10 Professional for $15, activate instantly online with Microsoft, and keep it forever. Don't pay full price. Get the best deal from our sponsor, URCD Keys, using our link in the video description below. Full details on how this amazing deal works at the end of the video. The RTX 4090 launched late in 2022, and it is the flagship of the line, which it should be for $1,600. Unlike the 30 series, where the 3080 and the 3090 were very similar in terms of performance, it was just the VRAM that was the primary difference, the 4090 is legitimately substantially faster than the 4080. Again, we're not talking about the 4080 here, but there is a serious performance gain, especially at 4K or 1440p high refresh rate gaming. On the other hand, the 4070 is a much more mainstream card, priced substantially less at $600 half the VRAM, but it has more VRAM than the 3080 did at launch. Before we open up these video cards, let me give you the TLDR and my first take. The 4090 is the ultimate card if you want to play games at 1440p, high refresh rate, ultra detail for more than two years, or 4K gaming, again, high to ultra detail for more than two years. It's expensive, but the performance is nearly twice as much as the 4070. On the other hand, if you have any compromise in you whatsoever, if you're okay with 100 frames per second instead of 144, if you're okay with 1440p high instead of 1440p ultra, the 4070 is really a fast card in its own right and will serve a lot of people's needs for the next two to four years without complaint. It's a lot less expensive, but it will need to be replaced sooner. Something to keep in mind is that if you buy the 4070 and you wanna maintain a given level of performance at 1440p, in two years time when the 5070 launches, you may need to buy it. So you spend 600 now and you spend six, maybe $700 in the next two years to replace it with the 5070. In all likelihood, the 5070 is going to be performance competitive with the 4090. That's typically how it tends to work. So if you buy a 4090 now, you could potentially skip the 50 series generation and carry on. With the 24 gigs of VRAM, that definitely helps, but you gotta shell out an absolute ton of money today to do it. On the plus side, with a 4090, you can basically take any game, crank the details to the max, and enjoy without having to think about it too much. It has absolutely nothing to do with either of these cards, but I do think an honorable mention needs to go to the RX 6700 XT and RX 6800 XT, both of which are currently quite a bit less expensive than this card. You can pick up a 6700 XT with 12 gigs of VRAM for just over $300 and a 6800 XT with 16 gigabytes of VRAM, more than the 4070, for under $500. Both of those cards are great values for the money. And if you don't care about ray tracing or TLSS3 frame generation, those are actually a better value in terms of dollar cost per frame per second. But they are previous generation cards. They are two years old. And if you want the latest and greatest features, well, you're looking at them. First up, we're gonna unbox the 4070. I have an MSI Ventus 3X card, and I picked this card specifically because it has a very awesome feature. It features an 8-pin PCI Express power connector, not the new 16-pin PCI Express power connector. Now, what's interesting is the MSI Gaming X Trio 4070 does have the new 16-pin connector. Very important point. Some cards have the old connector, some cards have the new connector. Which one you prefer is a personal choice. But if you have a power supply that still has the old 8-pin connectors and you don't have the new 16-pin connector, you might wanna consider getting a card it just has the eight pin connector and make your life much easier. Yeah. 
It's a box with a video card. I know you're amazed. That is the saddest inclusion of contents in a box ever. This is... Is there no plastic to peel? Oh, I feel cheated. Oh, wow, that is... That is okay, that is... The, I, there's not... There's nothing to peel. There's no plastic. Plastic? Plastic? The entire card is plastic. Okay, the heat sink is metal, but... And here we have our lovely RTX 4070 card. If you look at the bracket here, you'll notice that the card is a little bit taller than the bracket, so it is not completely flush with where you would mount it into a computer, but it is not drastically taller. The Gaming X Trio and some of the very large cooler cards are going to be taller than this. Lengthwise, it is a triple fan card, so it's a fairly long card. Make sure your case has room for it. If your case does not have room for it, there are two fan 4070s. This is only a 200 watt card, and so you can absolutely get away with the two fan cooler, although many of the two fan cards are thicker. If you look at this thickness wise, this is absolutely a true two slot card. It is not thicker than the two slot bracket. So if you've got something else in the slot next to it, it will fit just fine. Sometimes the two fan versions are like two and a half slots wide. So that is something to consider. Looking at the top of the card, you will notice the eight pin PCI Express power connector. There is just one because it's a 200 watt card, 150 watts from the connector, 75 watts from the motherboard slot. You're good to go. Now it is actually in the middle of the card, which some of you will care about and some of you won't. Any card you consider, and of course there are many different cards to pick from, look at the location of the of PCI Express power connector because the location of that cable may cause you to choose one card or another depending upon how your case is currently wired. The reason the power connector is here, there's no printed circuit board. The extra fan is a pass-through. There's actually holes in the back and that third fan blows straight through. Now there are heat pipes and there are vents here to help cool the card. The printed circuit board is 60% of the length of the card. The rest is just fans and cooler. And then finally on the back, we have a single HDMI port and then three display ports. If you're going multi-monitor, use display port if you can. Otherwise, you have an HDMI. In terms of this specific card, if you came here interested in the Ventus 3X, it is fine. It does feel a little bit cheaply built. All of this is plastic. None of this you see here is metal. When I tap it, that's all plastic. Everything on here is, shall we say, low end. Now this card was $599. It's at MSRP. There is no third party uh, add in board partner markup. When we turn the card around to the back, this is also plastic on the back. It does not have a metal heat shield on the back. Now for a 200 watt card, am I terribly worried about it? No, but if you care, or you're in a hot environment, maybe you have a non-air conditioned room, you might wanna buy a card that's made out of metal and maybe has a little bit beefier cooler. That brings us to the big beast, the RTX 4090. Now this is the same manufacturer, but not the same model. It's a Gaming X Trio. Some of you may say, well, I'd like to see the difference between the Gaming X Trio 4090 and the Gaming X Trio 4070. There is an argument to be made for that. However, I think for people buying a 4070, the Ventus X3X makes a lot of sense because it's smaller, fits into more cases, has the eight pin connector versus the 16 pin connector. And honestly, for my own uses, I would rather it have the eight pin as well, which is why I went with it. If you are going with a 4090, you go straight to the top. There is no sense whatsoever in buying the cheapest card you can find. The extra $50, maybe $100 to buy an Asus ROG Strix, a Gaming X Trio or the Supreme model if you prefer it, or the uh, Aorus or the Aorus Extreme from Gigabyte or whichever manufacturer. The top end best cooling card when you're at the top of the market makes a lot of sense. But as you get down, down market, it makes sense to buy a less expensive card. Spending an extra $100 on a 600R card is a lot higher percentage than an extra $100 on a 1600R card.
As an interesting side note, some companies wrap their boxes in shrink wrap and some don't. Gigabyte looking at you. Same cardboard box, same piece of foam. It is thicker foam though. It's fancy foam. And once again, we have a video card in a box. Ooh, ah. We have a support bracket. This is a weight bracket because this is a big, heavy, chunky card. Let's just say it's supersized its fries at McDonald's. Essentially, this part here screws into the slot uh, connectors on your case below the video card, and this simply provides a weight support for the video card itself. I wonder if that actually does anything. Taking the card out of the, oh, wow. Okay, now, you cannot see weight on camera, but just the bulk and mass of this compared to the Ventus 3X, one of these is not like the other. This thing weighs a metric ton. I can see why they put the support bracket in there. Honestly, video cards are getting a bit ridiculous. Oof. Now, this is interesting. This is actually our second 4090. If you've seen our previous 4090 benchmarks, those were done with a Gigabyte gaming card. This is, of course, an MSI. And it comes with an adapter cable to adapt your 8-pin PCI Express power connectors to the 16-pin connector that goes onto the card itself. The Gigabyte card and most cards that launched came with an adapter that had four 8-pin connectors on one end and the 16-pin on the other. This card comes with a, this is new actually, this is not the same type of adapter they all had at launch, so clearly they've updated the adapters. There are three 8-pin connectors, and there's a note here that says, please use individual PCI Express power cables for each plug. And it says, do not use the ones that loop around. So if you have a cable that comes out of your power supply, and there's an 8-pin, and then there's a little daisy chain loop and another 8-pin, the truth of the matter is, it's just two connectors. It's still just one cable out of your power supply. Now, I don't think it's a huge deal if you have a premium name brand power supply. If you have a 1000 watt EVGA G6 premium 80 plus gold power supply, it isn't gonna matter what you use. Those things are built like a tank. If you have some no name 850 watt cheap piece of junk that is six years old, buy a new power supply. A 1600 R video card deserves one. That is this. This is redonkulous. Wow, wow, wow. I have brought in an assistant in the form of Junior Deals, my son. If you have not watched his TNNs over on Tech News Network, linked in the video description below, please do so. He is doing an awesome job bringing the news to you every week. Now, the reason I brought Junior over here is I want Junior to hold his hands out. I'm gonna place each of these cards in his hand. He has not touched either of these yet as we're filming this. Are you ready? Yeah. Put your hands out. Okay. First impressions? It's a normal video card. Is it a reasonable weight? Install in normal motherboards, normal cases? Yep. It's pretty thin, fairly lightweight. Not too heavy? Nope. Seems reasonable. All right, set that down. Now, we're going to do the 4090. Put your hands out. It weighs as much as a semi truck. <laughs> is that the new Tesla Cybertruck? From the looks of it, it does. How heavy is that? At least five pounds. Does that weigh at least five times as much as that Ventus 3X card does? Definitely. Would you want to install that in a weak case, weak motherboard, weak anything? Assuming you could afford it. Do you see why they provide that support bracket with it? I do. One of these cards is not like the other. That is a beast. Thank you so much to Junior Deals for joining us for this weight demonstration of these cards. I pulled them out of the box, but I wanted to put them in his hands to get his first reaction. These things, this, this is just ridiculous. Be sure to check him out over on Tech News Network. He's posting new videos every week on all the latest tech news. Link in the video description below. If one test is good, two tests are better. This is my lovely daughter, Princess Peach, and she is going to do the same test that her brother just did. This is the 4070. Put your hands up for me. 
first reaction? It's not heavy at all. Is, is that easy to carry around, lightweight? Yeah. Are you worried about dropping it? No. Fair enough. Please don't throw it at me. <laughs> now we're going to do the 4090. This might be just a little bit heavier. Stick your hands out. It's not that heavy. Well, fair enough. She says it's not that heavy. Is it not as heavy as you thought it would be? No. Would you made it seem like it'd be like 500 pounds. <laughs> would you like to hold that up for the next 30 minutes? Will I get to keep it if I do? No. Oh, no, no. So you don't think this is as heavy as you thought it would be? No. Fair enough. But you agree that it is substantially heavier than the 4070? Yes. Okay. Thank you for your assistance. I don't have any channels to plug for her yet. One of these days, we'll get her on here. Looking at the 4090 Gaming X Trio itself, besides its absolutely gargantuan weight, my arm would not want to sit here for the next 10 minutes doing this. You can see the PCI Express bracket right here. First of all, this is a three slot bracket versus the two slot bracket, and it goes beyond the three slot bracket. This is a four slot card, maybe three and a half, but the fact is you would not be able to put anything in the next slot. So consider this to be a four slot card. It also goes up substantially at least a full inch over the top of the PCI Express bracket, so you're gonna need a fairly thick case in order to fit that in. And while there is a small divot to put the 16 pin connector, it doesn't go down very far, so that cable is still gonna come out the top of the card. The front of it is still plastic. This here is all plastic. However, the back is a different story. This, this is metal. This, this feels much better on the back. I mean, weight is weight. A, a chunk of metal can be heavy. That doesn't necessarily make it fancy. But the back plate is metal, which is very nice. And the fin density. When you actually look through the card and you look at the fin density, you can see that the fin density and the fin thickness, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight heat pipes coming out the back. Now they loop around the front and they go all the way through the other side. That is a lot of cooling on this card. You should not have a temperature problem. Now, as much power as the 4090 uses, the truth is this thing is built well enough based upon my experience using the 4080 and 4090 cards that we already have, I am not remotely worried about cooling on this card. This should run cool and quiet. It should last a very long time. Your single biggest issue with this is gonna be weight. You're gonna to wanna to have some kind of support. Now there is a bracket included in the box that mounts here and supports the card, but if you have a case that actually has a bracket which screws onto the back, or you can put something to vertically hold the edge of the card against the bottom, you'll put a lot less strain and wear on your system over time and you'll reduce the card sag, which should improve reliability. As I said at the beginning of this video, the RTX 4070 meets most people's needs. It is reasonably priced for how video cards currently cost in 2023. Please don't at me for that. It is what it is. It is fast. It has 12 gigs of VRAM. It's got great features, DLSS3, frame generation, better tensor cores, better ray tracing cores. Having said that, it's really a two-year card at 1440p for new AAA games, and then you'll have to start compromising detail or bring it down to 1080p. I know that sounds crazy, but look at the RTX 3070 and how well it's doing at 1440p. When it launched just over two years ago, people said, hey, it's a great 1440p card, it'll last for years. There are some new games in 2023 that it is not doing as well at that I think some people would have thought. So... If you want more than two years of AAA gaming at 1440p, it's expensive, but the 4090 will last a long time. Twice the VRAM, twice the performance. And boy, is that a chunky card. It sure is impressive, but it is $1,600. It is more than twice the price. And I certainly understand it's not for everybody. Looking for a Windows 10 or 11 product key, but you don't want to spend $100 to $200 for it? Our sponsor, URCD Keys, provides discounted Windows keys at amazing prices. $15 for Windows 10 Professional, $21 for Windows 11 Professional, and just $60 for Microsoft Office 2021 Professional Plus. These product keys are the real deal. They activate directly with Microsoft Online, link to your Microsoft account, and they work forever. For Windows, you simply go to Settings, Update and Security, Activation, click Change Product Key, 
paste the key provided by URCD keys, and in seconds, you're activated with Microsoft. For Office, go to setup.office.com, sign in with your Microsoft account, paste the product key provided by URCD keys, and then download Office 2021 Pro Plus directly from Microsoft. Remember to use the discount code TD20 to save 25% off the already deeply discounted prices and support our channel at the same time. We have been using product keys from URCD keys for almost five years now without any issues and encourage you to do so as well. Thank you all so much for watching to the very end of this video. Two gold stars for all of you. Like, comment, subscribe, and do all of the YouTube things. Links to Newegg, Amazon, eBay, etc., are down in the video description below. Links to these two cards are down there. They are in stock. They are purchasable right now. In fact, even several days after launch, the RTX 4070 still has half a dozen models available at MSRP at $599. I know a lot of people were hoping this would be $499, maybe a little bit less expensive. The 2070 and the 3070 were $499. But a thing called inflation happened, and NVIDIA is NVIDIA, so what do you want? It could have been worse. It could have been $699. So, hey, two thumbs up that it's $599? Yeah, I know. It's weak sauce. I'm reaching there. $1,600 is just expensive all the way around. On the other hand, the 3090 launched at $1,500. So it is what it is. 24 gigs of VRAM and truly performance in a class all of its own. AMD has nothing to compete with this in terms of performance. Now, AMD competes very well with the 4080 and the 4070 Ti. The 7900 XT for about $800 is an incredible value for the money and it is worth considering. But if you want the best, if you have an ultra wide, if you have 165 Hertz ultra wide, if you have a 4K monitor and you want the best, you're looking at it. The 4090 is legitimately faster than the 39 than the 4090. I would think that you would have room for it. However, there are three fan cards. The card is about 60% of the length of the card itself. Part of me thought about buying a Gaming X Trio 4070, but the 4070 Gaming X Trio, as I said before, had the 16 PC 16 pin.